uh, hello everyone this is Ashish and today we are going to continue our session on uh, WMI so so far we have discussed a uh, few basic things about sim and WMI classes I mean what are the things uh, why uh, what is sim and what is WMI and what is the philosophy uh, I mean background about it uh, why Microsoft is using WMI what does it exactly means and how you can relate it with uh, it is related to DMTF so if you have not watched my previous video I would recommend you watching WMI and SIM uh, because that's something if you if you do automation uh, then probably this is something you will encounter at at uh, at, uh, at a moment so I mean WMI and SIM is something uh, which is necessarily be uh, known to you know to automate uh, <clears throat> uh, things related to system I mean operating system or maybe uh, tool sets as well so let's begin our next session on WMI so so far we have discussed a uh, few basic things like what are the classes there I mean uh, what are the may I mean a few basic classes and then you can you know how you can explore the classes using my uh, different tools like one of the tool I have discussed is VB VBS edit which which gives you some uh, uh, snippets as well apart from that there are a lot of tools there are WMI editor from Microsoft as well which will uh, give you a uh, I mean which will give you a tool where you can select a particular uh, section like network or, or, or disk drive or something and then you will get the related <coughs> WMI classes so I mean uh, this is how you can you know uh, start uh, have have something from from a tool you know uh, whether from a snippet like VBS edit or some some other tool editor maybe which gives you edit uh, which which gives you a snippet for for WMI and then once you get to know the classes uh, I mean which which are responsible for the uh, for the components which you want to manage or you want to automate or maybe you want to get gather information about uh, so once you know them uh, you know uh, fetch it out from there and then start uh, applying your powershell concepts like you know using loops or maybe creating a hash table or things like that so that you can have a customized and you know uh, as per as as per as your requirement so that's how it starts i mean if you are confused that you will have to remember the class names so it's not like that i mean you won't be able to remember it uh, i mean until unless you use it on on a regular basis uh, and then if you are using it on regular basis then probably you will be interacting with couple of few only i mean it's not like you know you will be <clears throat> using all of the classes available for you in sim or maybe in wmi so mm, so that's how i mean that's i want to give a you know <clears throat> uh, a kind of uh, uh, tweak or tri uh, tips uh, when when you are actually trying to script something related to WMI so don't get discouraged uh, when you do not know the name of the WMI class I mean it's it's not that important the important part is once you know the name then you you should know how to navigate uh, inside that class and then you know how to use that class to get the information you want from there so yeah okay so we have discussed how to you know run basic commands like get WMI object or maybe get sim instance and then <clears throat> we we left with one more thing that uh, as you know that we have already discussed that WMI or sim uh, you know act like a repository but they are I mean act like something uh, a database or, 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 or table having columns and then having information over there but it's not a database why it's not a database because they have I mean apart from properties they have certain other things which database do not have that is we call methods so in in, in databases you won't see methods within the table I mean where where the data is residing but here in the in the WMI classes uh, you will you will see methods over there I mean apart from properties so that's why we, you you may relate it with the database uh, for for an overview but you won't say that technically uh, and in that so in that sense we have few few things uh, very you know very uh, 
I would say basic things. I mean, there are so many other things from uh, there as well uh, related to WMI or, or, or SIM. But these are the things you, you might use it or you might not use it. But yes, I mean, good to know information kind of that. So like one of the uh, one of the thing is remove WMI object like you. I mean, uh, like we have first few things like uh, using get WMI object, you get something. Like suppose uh, I have a C drive, okay. So I have C drive. I will create a folder over here. <clears throat> it's a folder. I mean, it can be another any other resource as well, like a registry key or or or, or a setting on a computer or something. So I say test folder, okay. So test folder is there. Now I will get it in in my in my you know WMI object or maybe sim instance. So I will say uh test folder is equals to get sim instance okay class name i will say it's uh, win 32 underscore directory again this is something i do remember right now but you know if you are dealing with file structure uh, on regular basis then you, you will remember it else you will have to uh, you know reference some document documentation to you know reach there then i will say filter and uh, i will say name is equals to c drive and uh, c drive test this should do the job let's see uh, okay Let's see, it looks like ID. Okay, so I have the uh, folder over here in this particular variable. If, you, if I will print that variable, it will give me the details of that folder. I mean details like writable or last modified and things like that. Now, I can use a method, you know, to remove this folder. Like I will say folder and pipe it with remove uh, remove <clears throat> same instance so it is a method which will remove that instance so if I will go there and see it should not be there now anymore you see there is no test folder over here now so i mean the, the these are the math i mean this is one of the very very basic example i i have shown uh there are so many so many resources in your computer like a registry key a task scheduler or a, you know or if you are dealing with databases then there there are so many uh, other things related to sql over there if it's a sql server if it's a is server then uh, there are things like, related to is websites and then attached properties and methods as well so like property you have you might want to do something with them uh, with the property they i mean with the method they have available with that particular class so this is one of the uh, i would say foundation from where you can start or from where you can relate it but you know progressively depending upon your domain depending upon your use cases uh, you will you will apply you will apply uh, these techniques i mean uh, i would say techniques i mean it's it's like you you should be aware that okay apart from data we have something uh, to take action as well so something like that uh, now apart from that we also have one of the class like you know register sim uh, indication event so it is something uh, let me just go over health file because it's I mean it's it's something to register uh here it is so it's it's something register a kind of uh, monitoring you want to monitor some processes on your computer or or, or things then you can register that uh, on on your computer on your on or 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 on the remote computer and then you can you know continue continuously getting the those information over here so uh, we can see here in the example. I mean, I can run this here in on in my console as well. So I mean, it's just the idea that register sim indication event. It is registering that event. 
win32 process start trace so whatever the process start it will it will i mean from this class it will have a you know uh, event subscribed and then you can get that event subscribed uh, using this uh, you know source identifier so i mean it's like uh, i will say it's like monitoring like uh, you want to monitor a, a remote server for a particular process then you might register event for that and then you know whenever you want that information you know on on a graphical user interface or maybe in a log file or you, maybe you want to act upon that so these kind of things are possible using this class uh, say register sim indication event or register wmi event i mean these are two same things uh, you know uh, alternative of each other so sim if you are uh, going for a sim then you will use this one if you are going with the wmi then you will use wmi uh, why we are you know we should be you we should be using sim as much as possible and that's what we are going to talk about in my next slides uh, let's switch to the next slide so the title says why we have sim when we have wmi from, from ms to do the job okay so as we know that wmi itself is implementation implementation of sim in in the uh, in the windows ecosystem from microsoft so why microsoft is you know um, providing sim classes as well i mean sim sim methods as well or i would say sim commandlets as well uh, you know uh, while while they are giving us the wmi things already there so this is one of the question i mean uh, which which uh, which is the reason uh, we should be using sim as much as possible why because <clears throat> sim is open standard so it is open standard and then when you are using sim commandlets or or when you are following the sim pattern uh, you are not logged with windows only sim is something which will be implemented over there we, whosoever is you know following this dmtf guideline right so we have talked about that in uh, you know in in our initial video uh, while we are talking about wmi and sim introduction so this is what it is i mean it is open standard it gives you it gives you much more flexibility than wmi wmi is something uh, logged with the windows or microsoft itself uh, while while sim is something which which gives you the cross uh, vendor or cross platform uh, you know uh, availability then again uh, sim uses ws man which is kind of advanced method of remoting uh, while is uh, now again about ws man if you want to know the details uh, i would recommend you watching remoting sessions over there because ws man uh, which is used by powershell for remoting uh, we have discussed how to remote on a on a uh, how to do these task on a remote machines so that's where ws man comes into the picture then again it's a uh, it's a open standard by by dmtf itself and then ws man has been implemented by microsoft in in powershell uh, as well and sim uses uh, you know that particular uh, thing uh, behind the scene for for executing remote task while wmi uses a uh, older one which is dcom so dcom has its own uh, limitations i would say or 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 it's old i mean uh, it's a, a com model which is kind of uh, which has uh, uh, certain things which security people don't like i would say i mean if you want to know more about this one i would recommend you you know uh, going through some some article over the internet but uh, as far as this scope of the uh, training is concerned uh, i would tell you the dcom is the older older guy uh, which has you know limitations there uh, related to firewalls related to things which uh, which not uh, many people like in these modern uh, distributed computing while ws man is something which is uh, the the one thing which is very much uh, you know very much uh, uh, supportive for that is it is a open standard by by dmtf itself so you have ws man implemented in different vendors uh, using different techniques maybe but the protocol is the same behind the scene so if you are using ws man you are not logged with windows only 
while we are you while you are using WMI, it, uh, you are already logged with WMI because it's a Microsoft thing, and then in a, behind the scene it it is using a, a, a older technology to communicate where where you might have issues within your environment if you are you know up to uh, into a updated environment where people don't like the old the old way of doing things. And then it can be used with OMI, Open Management Infrastructure Compliant Device. So it's the same thing, I would say, uh, what we have talked about so far in the previous two points, that as it is, you know, uh, SIM is something, uh, something open standard by DMTF. So Open Management Infrastructure Compliant Devices will always have SIM implemented and you, you will always have that particular compatibility with your uh, <clears throat> with your <clears throat> uh, architecture uh, it can be used to manage any computer or device with an OS again the same thing I would say uh, but in a different way uh, sim object manager compliance implemented so sim is again uh, one of the open standard I we, we have already talked about so I mean oh the, the whole thing is that sim is new I mean sim is advanced sim is open standard and sim is something which everyone is using so you should be using it that's what it is now if you are stuck with WMI because of certain um, certain things like uh, I would say I have seen people using uh, WMI uh, from SECM background because they have so many classes uh, dependent on WMI I mean SECM does a lot of things behind the scene using WMI uh, so so there you might be using WMI a lot but then if you have the sim option you know try to try to use that uh, that will help you to achieve your task in a more uh, in a more uh, i would say advanced way and then it will be a future um, a, a thing which which can be usable on on different platform maybe so that's what it is now the sick now i mean uh, let's uh, okay we have another uh, topic which is com model okay so let me let's d uh, close this one today because it's not that uh, if we will start uh, we might end up uh, you know uh, uh, <clears throat> going beyond 30 minutes but we we have left with these two things working with com and working with dotnet object in powershell i might not be i will i will try to you know uh, skip maybe this one because the focus of this training is for administrator or the people who want to use infrastructure as code so this one is much more um, I would say a uh, thing which you will come across when you will be uh, close to developers I mean when you are actually interacting with dotnet a, a lot but let's see so uh, we will be discussing in this next session working with com objects so com objects like you know uh, the applications you installed on your computer like excel or maybe um, internet explorer and um, you know creating an instance of them in the background using that instance to do certain automation things like that and then we have the module development uh, section and then the GUI application so we are almost there uh, we are about to finish this course and then after this course we will be starting the series of devops so you know you know uh, just uh, excited to create content for that we will be discuss so many things uh, philosophy around devops uh, why devops what is you know what are the things you should know about devops and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, we will we will obviously discuss about tools, but more than that, we will be discussing about philosophy uh, because that's what it is. It's not about tools only. So yeah, I mean, uh, excited for you know launching those sessions. So keep sharing, keep liking videos there, and uh, you know comment anything, any suggestion you have. Or, or you want me to discuss any other thing or, or any details or any any particular thing which you want you want me to explore more okay thank you so much bye bye